Hi everyone. Hey, this is it. Okay, the idea. Uh, the the lesson here is called ideal gas law. Yeah, lots of variables here. So let's get right into it. So start first off, the ideal gas law. How no? What? Who? Who is the person to discover this? And I mean, what? What is this? Well, it came through. Uh, various of theories and it is actually put together by you know a whole bunch of scientists in terms of what what they know so first we have this dude his name is Boyle okay and he he says something along the line where pressure is inversely proportional to volume I don't know what does he mean by that well, let's take a look at a little apparatus called the cylinder and piston apparatus. Okay, here's a cylinder. Here's a piston right here. This is the piston. And of course, there's the cylinder. And there's, of course, gases in here inside the cylinder. And he said that as you apply pressure, obviously, this thing can go up and down and of course, it's pretty sealed over here, so gas is not going to be able to escape from the side. That if you increase the pressure, well, what happens to the volume of the cylinder? Well, you can see that the cylinder with you know, the gas inside, uh, it's going to be a lot less. Okay, there's going to be less volume in here. So this is what he meant by pressure is inversely proportional to volume. That as pressure increases, the volume decreases. And of course, the other way around also uh, be legitimate that if you decided to decrease the pressure, while well, the volume here is going to increase. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind here is that the gas particle, okay, the gas particle, uh, they are definitely right here moving a lot faster. Why? Because remember, under the particle theory, that particles are always moving. They're always moving. Okay? When they're moving, they're going to be bumping into each other a whole lot more than here because there's more room for these particles to run around. So since that there's less room, the fact that they are running into each other Okay, more there's gonna be a more what we call collision frequency. As a result, there's more kinetic energy going around here. Okay, and you can even say, of course, that the molecules right here are at a higher pressure, therefore having more kinetic energy than the molecules outside of the cylinder. Now, there's a saying, okay? Particles move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Definitely here is a higher pressure than the outside of the cylinder. So what that means is this, that if you decided to, let's say, puncture a little hole right there, okay, what will happen? Will these gas particles move out? Or will these gas particles move in? Remember, under the law of kinet uh, molecular kinetic theory, particles move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. This is definitely a higher pressure than this. So it's logical that more air particles will move this way than this way. So overall, is that way. All right, let's seal this back. But that's what Boyle says. Boyle says that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Okay, that, that's cool and all, that's really cool. You know, it's, I'm glad he figured that out. But yeah, let's take a look at another law then. Let's clear the page right here and let's take a look at another law. We have Charles Law. He said that volume is proportional to temperature. 
Okay, you know, what, what does he mean by that? So let's go back, okay, with our cylinder and piston apparatus. And here's some gas particle. Okay, here's a certain volume that you can, you can abbreviate. And let's put this under heat. Now let's put a little fire underneath, you know? What happens when you put something under heat? Well, these particles is going to gain the heat energy from here, and they're going to be able to move faster. When they move faster, they're going to be bumping into each other more frequently. When that happens, and let's say pressure here is constant, we're not going to play with the with a piston, uh, this is gonna be constant, no increase of pressure, no decreasing of pressure, no outside forces. We're just gonna let this cylinder heat up. Well, these particles are gonna be moving faster and faster and faster. Eventually, they're gonna say, we need more room. Okay, we need more room. We're gonna push this up. Since nobody's applying pressure, we're going to push this up. So, in many cases, you're going to have an increase in volume. So what that means is that volume increases when temperature increases. Alright? So that, that, that's, that's Charles' law. And then another law came along known as Avogadro's law. You know, he says that volume is also proportional to uh, the amount of moles if things were to remain constant in concentration. I mean, that, that, that's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool. And then another guy came along. His name is called Calvin. In fact, he, he's actually Lord Calvin. I wonder what makes him so important that he's Lord. He's knighted and stuff like that. But he said, of course, the, the absolute temperature is uh, known to give known to be this unit known as Kelvin. So he named it after himself. That somebody asked him, what, what is the coldest it can ever be? You know, in Celsius, we can go down to the negative. So negative what is considered to be the coldest? And he said that at zero degree Kelvin, or zero Kelvin, I don't think he says degree, it is equivalent to negative 273 degrees Celsius. Kind of around there. It's more like negative 273.15 or something. But yeah, this is the coldest temperature you can ever get. What does that mean? What that means is that under zero pressure, or you can say under circumstances where there is no gas particle, this is the temperature. Wow. No, that's... You know, that's, that says a lot, man. That says a lot. So the ideal gas law is put together based on all of these theory. And here it is. PV is equal to NRT. This is the ideal gas law based on, you know, what Boyle says, what Charles says, what Avogadro says, what Kelvin says. And of course, P is your pressure. Okay, and this pressure can be, you know, many different units. I mean, there's so many different units along the way. You know, there's atmosphere, there's tor, there's kilopascal. Oh, let's just go with Pascal. Okay, and uh, and mmHg. Now that's, that's that's actually pretty popular. You no. Know? Yeah, no, don't laugh at it. It's actually pretty popular. Uh, vol v, of course, stands for volume. And uh, liters. Okay? N stands for the number of moles. And, of course, that's mole. That's normal. Let's skip R for a second. We'll talk about R in a sec. But uh, let's take a look at T. T, is, of course, is temperature. And this is measured not in degrees Celsius because of that negative sign. No, definitely not Fahrenheit. And uh, of course, this is going to be in Kelvin. Now, R is, is, is special, 
okay, are special. This is known as the ideal gas constant. What is it? Well, the ideal gas constant depends on what you use for pressure. If pressure was measured in atmosphere, then the ideal gas constant should be 0 0.0821. Just naturally, just 0 0.082. That one, one is not going to play that big of a role. And uh, it will be atmosphere liters per mole Kelvin. Okay? And uh, hey, it, if it's not atmosphere, but if it's Tor or MMHG, okay, they, they, they really mean the same thing. And R in this case will be 62. 0.36 okay and uh if you're looking at pascal and of course r will be uh 8.31 okay kilopascal i don't know why saying pascal but yeah kilopascal kilopascal will be 8.31 so it all depends on what you use for pressure. You will have a different number for the ideal gas constant. So this this is great. I mean, there's lots of variables here. And, you know, one of the things, of course, when you're doing these questions is to be very careful in terms of what, um, what units Okay, they're under because if you are given milliliters in volume, you might not want to change that to liters. If you're given degree Celsius, you might want to change that to degree Kelvin, you know, stuff like that. So let's uh, let's take a look at some questions then. Okay, here's samples of ideal gas questions. And let's take a look at the, the first one. It says calculate the number of moles present in 300 liters of ammonia gas at 700 mmHg and negative 20 degrees Celsius. And uh, hey, you know, nice enough to give you the answer there. So you can pretty much bet that with all these units, this is an ideal gas problem. And what I like to do is I, I like to like, you know, put everything that was given on the side and kind of go from there, you know, just gathering the information putting it nicely. So it looks like we're looking for moles. No big deal, just easy to do. Do I have volume? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 300 liters. Do I have pressure? Definitely, 700 mmHg. So knowing the fact that we're working with mmHg, you should know, of course, which R to use, right? And our uh, temperature here, of course, is negative 20 degrees Celsius and uh, what you need to do is you need to change that to Kelvin. Remember what I said earlier, that at zero degrees Celsius, sorry, yeah, zero Kelvin, sorry, zero Kelvin, you're looking at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So what that means is that to change Celsius to Kelvin, you are adding 273. So 273 plus negative 20, Okay, that, that, that should be very easy, right? That's uh, nothing more than 253 Kelvin. So that's how you change Celsius to Kelvin. All right, so let's go. N is equal to PV divided by RT. So P is 700. V is 300. Divided by, okay, what R to use? We're looking at MMHG. So the most logical R to use, of course, is 62.36. And 253 degree Kelvin. I'm not sure that I'm even supposed to say degree Kelvin. I don't hear, you know, being written anywhere. So I, let's just call it Kelvin, you know. Give Kelvin his dues. Give Calvin his dues, and of course the answer should be 13.3 mole, exactly what, you know, it says right there.
Okay. And it's pretty simple. If they ask you, you know, well, what is the mass of ammonia? And, and all you have to do is multiply this number by the molar mass of NH3. So that, that should be simple. Yeah, most most cases, they're never going to ask you moles. Most cases, they're going to ask you mass because mass is more, way more universal, you know, than moles. You know, how many often do you hear people say, can I get a mole of something, you know, other than chemistry? And in real life, you know, give me the mass of something. But yeah, that's that's how you do one of these questions. So that's basically how you use the ideal gas law. Let's do a couple more questions here. Let's do a couple more. Let's let's do question two. Yeah. So here I'm looking for volume. What volume, right? And I'm given hey, I'm I'm given the mass of something here. Hey, let's take, check this out. 350 grams of methane gas. I'm going to have to do something about that. Uh, I'm also given temperature to be 20 degrees Celsius, and I'm given pressure here to be 1.2 atmosphere. Okay, that, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, there's going to be some units conversions I'm going to have to do before I proceed. And the first one, of course, is mass. I can't use mass. I have to use mole. So therefore, I'm going to have to somehow change 350 grams to moles. And that's simple. I'm going to multiply this by the molar mass of, uh, well, I'm going to divide this by the molar mass of methane gas, and that will be 16 grams per mole. So 350 divided by 16 is 21.9 moles. That's a lot of moles. And uh, other than moles, temperature needs to be changed, right? So I'm going to have to take 273 and add that to 20, and that will give me 293, okay, Calvin. And now it looks like I'm ready to put the information into my ideal gas law equation. So V is equal to NRT over P. N is 21.9. Oh, R, what am I going to use for R? I mean, my pressure is an atmosphere. So it's only logical that my R is 0 0.082. Uh, my T is 293. And the pressure here is 1.2. And, you know, put all this information into my calculator right here. And uh, let's hope I... Yeah, I have 438 liters. Okay, just like what is being said right here. It's Kinda nice when you get the answer right. All right, let's 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 do one more. You know, let's do one more. How many moles are present in eight hundred and fifty-four liters of nitrogen one oxide? Or you know, some people, most people call it dinitrogen monoxide or whatever. At two hundred fifty degrees Celsius and on thousand nine hundred and sixty-four mmHg. How you're looking? A lot of gases here, man. A lot of gases. So here I'm looking for N again. Okay, so I'm look having a, a volume of 854. Uh, I have the temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 1,964 mm Hg. Okay, looking to see what needs to be converted. It looks like it's only temperature here. So temperature is going to be 273 plus 250, okay, that will be uh, 523, hopefully I'm right, and you know, I'm pretty sure it is, and uh, that's in Kelvin. So N is equal to PV divided by RT, so let's, let's plug those numbers in, so 1,964 mmHg times 854 liters, Divide that by, okay, R, R is uh, mmHg, so therefore I'm going to be using 62.36 um, uh, as my R, times temperature, which is 523 Kelvin. All right, let's, let's see right here. These are big numbers, man. These are big numbers. There's no way I can do these in my head. And uh, the answer is 51.4 uh, mole. Just like what I said right there. So it's pretty neat. If you think about it, it's pretty neat. Definitely 
Not bad at all. All right. Let's do one more. Hey, this one is in KPA. That's never, never did this one yet, but let, let's take a look at this. So what pressure in kilopascal, okay, I want in kilopascal, does 50 grams of chlorine gas occupying this volume, 400 liters, and in this degree, wow, 1,500 degrees Celsius. That's, that's pretty hot if you think about it. You know, what can get that hot? So let's take a look at how we're going to do this. So I'm looking for pressure. Okay. And uh, volume here is 400 liters. There's no moles, but there's definitely mass. 50 grams of chlorine gas. And the temperature here is said to be 1,500 degrees Celsius. A couple of units conversion. So first, let's do the mass. Let's turn that to moles. So the molar mass for chlorine gas is 70 grams. I hope I'm right. So 50 divided by 70 is said to be 0 0.714. Okay, and uh, again, I'm going to have to change my degree Celsius to degree Kelvin. Okay, that will give me 1,773 Kelvin. And let's calculate pressure. Now, this, this one is a little free-for-all. Some people, you know, if you already know what R to use, use the R that they want you to use. Go. I want my answer in KPA, so therefore I'm going to use 8.31 as my R. But if you don't know that, you know, 8.31 is the R to use for KPA, I mean, you can always use the others. It's just that if you really want KPA as an answer, there is a conversion that I'm going to show you a little, little bit. So, uh, yeah, let, let us, let's do that later. But, yeah, let's take a look at pressure, Okay. Let's calculate this based on KPA. So, P is equal to NRT over V. Okay, N is 0 0.714. If you want KPA, you want R to be 8.31. You want temperature, 1,773. Well, that's really, really hot. And uh, 400 liters as my volume. So if you punch all of these guys into your calculator like what I'm doing, and uh you're gonna get 26 kPa. I'm close. Okay, round that off, that's gonna be 26. But let's say I did not do this because I didn't know that R is 8.31. I only know R to be let's say 62. What can I do? Well, there is a unit conversion for pressure. And definitely this is something that I, I think is wise to know. Okay, it's important to know, I, I guess. The units conversion for, uh, for different pressures out there, you know? Different pressures out there. So get this. For every atmosphere, okay, it is 700 and 60 tor, which is of course 760 mmHg. Because mmHg and tor is just really the same thing. It is, it's just really the same thing. So I'm always wondering why, why, why do we have two of these things? I, obviously, there, I'm sure different scientists have worked on pressure and I guess two different scientists Coming up with the same thing when you know sometime, and who knows, right? Who knows? You know what went on here, but that's you know the unit conversion for pressure, and uh, and one hundred one point three two six or three two five, sorry, three two five kilopascal. Okay, so that's the unit conversion for pressure. So what that means is that if you have one atmosphere. If you have one atmosphere, you're going to have that many kPa, okay? And you have two atmosphere, so that means it's 202 kPa. So that's something important to note, I guess. So if somebody, if you have a device that measures Tor, 
and you really want this to be in pass, you know, kilopascal, then you know you might want to uh, uh, have this in mind. Okay, you might want to have this in mind. So hey, that's uh, pretty much it here. You know, that's hopefully you guys understand this. Let, let me do one more of these. Let me do the last question, and then we'll call it it for the day. And it's, it's pretty simple here. So. In this question, you're looking for mass. Okay, mass of fluorine gas. Uh, with a volume of 79.6 milliliter, with a temperature of negative 200 degrees Celsius, and with a pressure of 56 kilopascal. Okay, that, that's nice, that's nice. So, uh, what are we gonna find? Well, we need to find mass. But the ideal gas law doesn't involve mass, but it does involve moles though. So it looks like you're finding moles. And then later on, you'll convert that back to mass. That's not a problem. We know what chemicals we are working with, right? So let's plug this in. So 56 kilopascal, okay? And uh, with a volume of, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, ho, that's gonna be some units conversion I almost forgot. So you can't use this number. You're gonna to have to change that to liters. So to do that, you really need to divide that by a thousand. So this is really 0 0.0796 liters. And I almost forgot to turn this into Kelvin. So you're looking at 273 plus negative 200. So that's gonna be 73. All right, so let's plug all the rest in. So volume is going to be 0 0.0796. Divide that by, all right, okay, I guess we're going with KPA, so R is going to be 8.31. And uh, multiply that by T, which is 73 Kelvin. And uh, let's put all this mess into my calculator here. And let's see what I got. Okay, I have 0 0.0073 moles. Well, I'm not asking for moles. The question is asking for mass. So I'm going to have to multiply this number by the molar mass of fluorine gas. Uh, fluorine is 19 times 2. So therefore, you're looking at four, 38 grams per mole. Moles cancel. So this is nothing more than 0 0.0073 times 38. And uh, the answer is 0 0.277. So I guess two, 0 0.28. Hey, hey, I got it. I got it. Just like what the answer is saying. So anyhow, that, this is how you use the ideal gas law. Now, there's a lot of variables here. What that means is that the ideal gas law can be easily manipulated to, to find other things. And that's exactly what we're going to do later. We're going to take a look at ideal gas law and we're going to manipulate the equation to allow you to find other important variables. All right, I guess we'll do that next time. Goodbye, everybody.